If you've been following me on Twitter, you may have noticed my complaints that I've been spending a lot of time recently struggling with storage space on my computer and network drives and things like that. I've been really desperate for a mass storage solution. I've yet to find that, but in this video I'll show you a different solution that I found that will make my life a little bit easier temporarily, especially once we cover a couple more conventions, and that's to do my own sort of DIY external solid state drive, which will help me transfer footage faster between my laptop to edit on on the go and my desktop, as well as gives me for what I built, 500 gigs of external solid state drive storage for much cheaper than you'd pay for a normal external solid state drive. Let's check it out. So perusing Amazon for external solid state drives, especially in the 500 gigabyte and above capacity, does not wield all that many results, mainly because the price points are a bit higher than people would like, deeming them not super popular at the moment. But then I found a way to build my own for a lot cheaper. So. I went with a 500 gigabyte or 480 gigabyte model, which is this ADATA SATA 6 gigabit per second SSD. It is the Premier SP550, and it is a 480 gigabyte solid state drive. It cost me around 108 bucks. Now, literally the week before I finally decided to pull the trigger on the purchase, it was on sale for under 100 bucks. So keep in mind, if you're waiting, if as long as you're willing to wait for sales and play with this, you can actually get this for a lot cheaper than I paid. Then I picked up this Inatech external 2.5 inch enclosure. It was, again, on the week before when I planned this whole video, it was on sale for $17. I paid about $21. So if you count what I paid, which was $108 for the solid state drive and $21, for the enclosure, it's 129 bucks for a 500 gig, basically, external solid state drive. Look that up on Amazon, you're paying at least 150, closer to $200 sometimes, depending on what you're getting, and a lot of them are discontinued models. So instead, I picked up, like I said, this external Inatech SSD, or actually it's a hard drive enclosure, but it's a 2.5 inch enclosure, which comes with the shell itself, a little foam sticky pad in case you're using an ultra slim drive which is mainly hard drives comes with the external usb micro 3.0 a to b connect cable and then a secondary cable for power as well you may be thinking to yourself that this isn't a super crazy idea external docks and enclosures and adapters have been around for a while what makes this special especially to require a second USB port on a computer or a wall to USB wart of some sorts. This actually has a USB 3.0 hub built in as well. So on the edge where the you know power and activity indicators are for the hard drive itself, it actually has three extra USB 3.0 ports, which makes it perfect for using with my new laptop when I'm gonna be editing on it because that means I get to hook up the hard drive and use it with the laptop without sacrificing USB 3.0 ports on the computer. In fact, I gained an additional two. On the whole, the install process was fairly straightforward and simple. You take your solid state drive, install it in the enclosure. Now, my, I had a little bit of trouble with this SSD and the enclosure, the SATA and power connection on the enclosure lining up properly. It does look like it's installed a little crooked for some reason, but that was the only way I could get it to actually like line up with the jacks. And then like I said, they do include a little sticky foam pad if you need to uh, make, you know, keep it from wiggling around if you have a slimmer than 2.5 inch drive. Mine fit perfectly, did not need the pad. Slide the panel back over top of the enclosure. And then like I said, on what, what I don't like about this is that the ports are on op opposing sides of the enclosure. That is simply because of how small the access area is. But on one side you have the USB 3.0 micro connection. And then on the other side you have the power jack, which is a tiny little circle DC 5 volt power to USB power. And then the USB 3.0 ports on the other end, like I said before, with indicator LEDs. Now you also have an HDD power switch to enable power to the actual hard drive itself, which you will of course need on if you have a drive in or you can just turn it off if you're just using it as a USB hub. Now there are a few different of these kinds of enclosures available, some for cheaper, especially if you go without the USB ports, like I said, but there are a few different versions of this kind of thing out there and you can build an external SSD for fairly cheap and it's already proven quite useful. Moving files back and forth between my server when it's already doing other things or just because I don't have the space on my main computer to actually move them off the server onto and to move video files over to my laptop fairly quickly when I'm talking multiple hundreds of gigabytes of files to edit video. 
very convenient and worth the price for me, especially since I got a fairly good deal on the solid state drive. And that's the big thing is you're going to, for this to get the best deal out of it, if you're doing it from a budget point of view, you're going to want to wait on the best sale you can find because that will give you the best possible price to performance, you know, price per storage ratio, of course, and especially savings below buying a, you know, a, a pre-made top brand product. I just thought this was a cool little project and wanted to share it with you guys. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome videos. Check out the link in the description below. I got product links for both of these that I have used as well as a search for the other types of enclosures you could use and solid state drives as well. And then we have our social media pages where you can follow us on Twitter, get more updates, get more behind the scenes things, Instagram where I post a lot of behind the scenes photos as well as, you know, photos of how I built the setup, things like that, and our Patreon campaign where you can get early access to all of these videos, even earlier than Vessel, for a small monthly contribution of your choosing and you get to help make these videos possible because they're not cheap and it's not easy to do. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.